G'day YouTube and welcome back to the ASX Portfolio channel. So today we're going to be doing what I have up on the screen right now. So we're going to be implementing uh, a, a solution to find out the implied volatility given option prices in the market. Now we're able to do this because the Black-Scholes formula is a closed form solution. So therefore if we have prices in the market we're able to work out what the implied volatility is. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to have to use a root finding method. The one we're going to use today is Newton's method, um, but it's actually called newton Rassen method. So I don't want to go into this too much, but right on the screen right now I've got the newton Rassen method. So this is the root finding method, and essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to converge on that root. So we're trying to converge where the graph is equal to zero, or that function is equal to zero. So Essentially what this method does, we're going to take an initial guess xn. So we take the xn guess and we step up to that function um, function as the value xn. At that point we can compute the slope, the gradient at that point. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the equation of a straight line to determine what the point xn plus 1 is. So as you can see on the screen, we can then work out the equation for xn plus 1 in terms of xn and the gradient. So now let's compare this to what we're going to be doing for options. So as you can see now on the graph, we have implied volatility on the x-axis and then on the y-axis, our function that we're trying to find the root of is actually the difference between the black shoal price that we calculate for that specific volatility and then the actual market price. So what we want is we want to converge on zero. We want there to be zero difference between the Black-Scholes price at that implied volatility and the market price. So as you can see, uh, I've highlighted the formula that we're going to use um, in red, and that is going to be um, the implied volatility, or, or as I have there, sigma. Sigma nu equals sigma old minus the difference between the Black-Scholes price calculated at that implied volatility minus the current market price all divided by Vega. Now Vega is the sensitivity of that call price, the Black-Scholes call, uh, call price with respect to a change in sigma implied volatility. So the gradient of that function fx or the Black-Scholes formula is actually Vega. So what we're going to do is jump into the code and hopefully um, you will be able to form a better opinion of how this works. So just before we get in, I just want to say that um, this is going to have this is going to be a standalone tutorial. So we're actually going to be implementing the Black-Scholes formula and Vega formula from a package, and that package is going to be uh, pyvolib. So um, go ahead and pip install that if you don't have it. So from pyvolib, you can call the Black-Scholes. Black Scholes formula, we're going to import Black Scholes as BS. And from pi vol lib dot black shoals, you're going to call the Greeks, and we're going to have the analytical and we're going to import Vega from that. So we're just calling the Black-Scholes formula and the Vega functions from, from those modules. So as soon as we've done that, we can start defining our function. So that's going to be implied vol. We're going to take in the stock price. We're going to take in the strike price, the time to maturity, risk-free rate, um, the market price. Now we can see the option. We're going to have a flag for whether it's a call C or a um, whether it's a put for P. And we also need to define a tolerance that we're actually optimizing to. So for this, we'll go 0 0.0001. Add another zero in there for good measure. So let's define what we're actually doing in this function. So calculating the implied volatility of an option, of a European option. So that's very specific because that's what we have the Black-Scholes closed form solution for. 
So from there, we're going to, we can define all our variables. So let's just do that quickly. So we have the stock price, we have the strike price, uh, we have the time to maturity, we have the risk-free rate, R, and the market price. In market, yeah. Cool, okay, so there's two things that we need to find before we go through the iteration function, and that is the max iterations. And we're gonna say that's 200. And we're also going to have the initial guess, and we're gonna call that vol old, and that'll be 30%. So this is our initial guess. Uh, for the Newton method. So now for k in range max iter, so we have the max iter just in case we're not converging upon a solution. That's gonna break it and then find out. Why would you not converge upon a solution? Because uh, there might not be a defined, uh, defined uh, zero within the function that you've specified. So if your market price is so far away, um, from the actual black shoal solution, you won't converge upon a implied volatility. So, but you shouldn't really find examples of that if you're using actual market um, options prices at the time, because they will all have an implied volatility if they're listed. Um, the market makers would, would never, never make something with negative implied volatility or um, at a ridiculously high implied volatility. So let's go in, Black Shoals price. So we need to calculate the Black Shoals price, we need to calculate the Vega, and then from there we can use what our um, initial vol old is to take the step forward and calculate vol new. So Black Shoals price, BS, and I think it just takes the following information, but it might take the flag first, so I think it takes so the Black-Scholes formula takes the flag, C, and then um, the stock price, the strike price, the time, um, the risk-free rate, and the market price. So, next thing we're gonna calculate is Vega. Like, let's call this something different. Um, on the formula there, in the top right-hand screen, I've called it C prime. We just don't wanna overwrite this, this uh, module function Vega, so. We'll keep C prime as that, and that takes the same arguments. Now, for some reason within this module, um, they actually output Vega, um, and they times it by 0 0.01, because they think that um, it's, it's the Vega is the sensitivity to 1% um, change in implied volatility, and that's correct, but that's implicit within the deviation, uh, the derivation of Vega. So I'm not sure why they multiplied it by um, 0 0.01 in their module. So we have to times by 100 to get the correct Vega for a 1% one, a 1 step change in, in the volatility. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, go into the documentation and you can, um, you can see their mistake. So C is equal to, um, we're gonna call that the difference between the Black Shoals price and the market price. Um, once we have the, the difference there, we can go straight into vol old and vol new. So vol new equals vol old minus that difference divided by C prime. Now we just need our exit conditions. So we're gonna use um, an if break. So if the absolute value of vol old and vol new Vol new is actually less than the tolerance we've defined. We want to break from our chain. Now, if that's not the case, what we want to do is we want to update the volatility old to be the volatility new. So we can take the next step in time. Um, once we've exited that loop, we just want to define that the implied volatility is going to be um, vol. New will be the last one if we break there. 
and then we'll return implied volatility. Excellent. So now we have that solution. I just want to focus on our exit condition here. So we're looking for the tolerance that's less than this really small tolerance between the difference of the volatilities. We might also want to condition this on the actual market prices because if the market prices get really negligible and the differences are so small, uh, we, we, we want to cancel there as well. So we'll just add in, it's either the absolute difference of the volatilities are less than the tolerance or the absolute difference of the actual prices are less than that. So we have the difference between the market price and we have the difference between the newly calculated Black-Scholes price. So new Black-Scholes price at that new volatility. Um, at that new volatility. And it's a good thing we picked this up because the Black-Scholes price, I've forgotten to include the volatility. And some reason having calculated the market price. So sorry for that pickup. I uh, vol old there. And no market price is going into the Black-Scholes formula. And it's the same for the C prime. So we calculate our new Black-Scholes price and we get the difference between that and the market price. And if that's less than the tolerance, we can break as well. So now that we have this um, this formula ready to go, let's test it out. So let's define some variables. So let's go a stock of 30, a strike price of 28, time half a year, and then the rate is, let's say 0.25%. Save those. Let's print out the implied volatility And we need to find the market price. The market price, let's say 370. Okay. So if we run that now, we should return the implied volatility. So 28%, let's times that by 100 to get the volatility as a percentage. So 28, as we can see there, if we change the price higher, so $5, then the implied volatility should go up. 45, if we change that again higher, 6, 30 cents, we get a higher implied volatility. If we go down, so let's step down to $3. 19, as we start getting closer and closer, so if, let, let's, let's step over the edge there, $2. So we actually didn't return anything then. And the reason is because for the definition of this price here, um, with a market price of $2, it doesn't exist in the Black-Scholes um, formulation. Now you can check that by just calculating for all volatilities from uh, the region from zero to whatever upper bound you want. Um, go calculate the possible Black-Scholes um, prices, and then you can look at the difference between a market price and the Black-Scholes price there. So enjoy using that tool. Looking forward to using this more over the next couple of tutorials. Um, but until next time, uh, leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.